Okay, let's try to factor a quadratic polynomial um, where the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1. Let's say something like 3x squared, and let's try 5x, and I want that to be minus 2. Let's say this is the question we're given. Okay, so I want to factor this without using any formula at all. So what am I going to need to do? Well, I want to express this as two binomials. And what we've been doing in the past is looking at the constant term and saying, okay, I'm going to need two numbers where when I multiply them together, I get plus or minus two. We're going to want minus two, but just looking at numbers whose product gives us two, well, that's just going to be one and two. The same thing is going to be true here on the left. I want when I multiply these two pieces to get 3x squared. So basically, if my coefficients are all integers, which this could be a harder problem, maybe they're not whole numbers, but let's hope they are, I'm going to need a 3x and a 1x. So one of these pieces is going to have to be a 3x, and one of these is going to have to be a 1x. Now, at this point, I only have two possibilities. I could have a 1 and a 2, or a 1 and a 2. We'll worry about the plus or minuses in a moment. Now I do have to write both of them, because this will be different if I have a 3x and a 1, or if I have a 3x and a 2. Normally if I had only x's, it didn't really matter. If I have an x and a 1 and an x and a 2, I could write either one first, so this would be redundant. But it's not redundant anymore. So I have to think about this a little bit. I have to think about, is there a way to make this work with pluses or minuses? Well, for this to end up as a minus 2, one of these is going to have to be a plus, and one of these is going to have to be a minus. Not only that, I have to think about what kinds of numbers I'm going to get. For instance, if I have um, this first possibility, and I want to examine this, the 3x times the 2 is going to give me a 6x, and this is going to give me a 1x. So I'll have a 6 and a 1. Is it possible to make a 6 and a 1, to use a 6 and a 1 to make a 5? Absolutely. How can I do that? Well, if I have a plus 6 and a minus 1, that's going to give me a 5. So that shows me that this is going to work. Notice I'd get 3x squared plus 6x minus 1x, so that gives me plus 5, and then minus 2. What else could I do? Well, looking down here, is there a way to use a 3x and a 2x to get a 5? Sure there is. If I make this a plus and this a plus, I'll get 3 plus 2, 5. Boom, they both work. Or do they? We can't forget that we need to actually get a negative 2 at the end. And only one of these is going to actually give me a negative 2. And it is not this one. So even though we were able to make the middle term work, using numbers with a product of 2, one of these methods did not give us the negative. It doesn't happen super often, but it happens sometimes. So you have to remember that you have to achieve both the middle term and the right term along with the left term. In any case, let's finish the problem. This tells me that one of these things is true. If the first is true, I get 3x equals 1, or x is 1 third. If the second is true, I get x is equal to negative 2. So these are my answers. Now, why don't we check them? We don't always have to check them if we're sure, but let's say maybe we're not so sure. In particular, let's check that one-third right off the bat. So one-third squared is one-ninth. So I have three times one-ninth. I could even write it as three times one-third times one-third if I want. A lot of different ways to do this. If I do that, I could cancel that out. It's completely up to you. Five times a third is five-thirds. And then this is going to be minus 2. And I need to check that this equals 0. Well, what happens here? Well, we cancel that out. So I have 1 third plus 5 thirds. That's 6 thirds minus 2. 
Does that equal zero? Sure it does, because six thirds is two. If I want to check my other solution, minus two, what do I do? Well, I plug that into here. So I get three times minus two squared, that's four, plus five times minus two, minus two, and I need this to equal zero. Does it equal zero? Sure. 12 minus 10 minus 2. Well, that's 12 minus 12. 0. So this works. And that's an example of factoring when the coefficient of x squared doesn't happen to be 1.